Well, as Russia and the United States battle for airspace in Syria, some new information today on ISIS. This week, the Treasury and State Departments quietly announcing the targeting of top financiers of the Islamic State. They come from more than a dozen different countries, highlighting the growing global reach of this terror network. Take a look at this map. And this comes amid growing evidence that ISIS and al-Qaeda are working together on a tactical level. Uh, joining us now, Jonathan Shanzer, Vice President of Research at the Foundation for Defense of Democracies. He wrote on this topic, Jonathan, we would have missed it, but you have experience working for the Treasury Department when it comes to terror financing. So, so this is your jam, <laughs> if you will, right? What did you learn from what the Treasury Department just announced yesterday? Sure. Well, first of all, Jenna, uh, you know, uh, the map, as you mentioned, is significant. We're looking at uh, ISIS nodes in places like uh, the UK and France, as well as Morocco, uh, Libya, Tunisia, Egypt, uh, the Caucasus, and of course, Syria, Iraq. We're looking now at an ISIS organization that has morphed, it has expanded, and it has grown in ways that I don't think anyone would have foreseen uh, even a year ago. Uh, on top of that, uh, we did see a lot of overlap between uh, uh, former al-Qaeda fundraisers or perhaps even current al-Qaeda fundraisers in places like Yemen and North Africa that now appear to be working on behalf of ISIS. What's interesting there, of course, is that we've heard a lot about the, uh, the competition between these two groups, but very few people have talked about their possible collusion. The designation from Treasury yesterday seems to indicate that there may be some collusion there. Interesting. With all the talk today, about Russia and Syria and what we are doing and what we're not doing in the country. We're actually ignoring the focus of so many, which is this horrendous terrorist group, this brutal terrorist group that continues to be able to function. Based on what you learned from the Treasury and for, from the, the funders, what does it tell you about the state or the health of the terror group? Well, it seems to me that they're, they are co-opting al-Qaeda fundraising channels, that they're using the recruitment channels uh, from al-Qaeda in the past and funneling them uh, through places like Turkey into the Syrian frontier. So it seems as though things are going very well for ISIS, all things considered. How do we cut off those channels? Well, I think part of it, and I've mentioned it before on this show, I think we've got to do something about that 565-mile border between Turkey and Syria, that it was mentioned three different times in this designation that people were using that border to funnel uh, people and perhaps money across those borders. And so we've got to try to do something with the Turks. Uh, we've heard from some government officials that the Turks have been doing a better job, but this designation appears to tell us otherwise. You know, I want to bring this full circle a little bit. Josh Ernest was just speaking at the White House press briefing about the way forward uh, when it comes to Syria. Of course, ISIS has been the announced goal of the administration about one of the priorities inside Syria. But you recently wrote about the foreign policy of this administration and how you feel it has been working in tandem, perhaps, with the Bush administration. So just take a listen to what Josh, Josh Ernest had, had to say. That means Russia will not succeed in imposing a military solution on Syria any more than the United States was successful in imposing a military solution on Iraq a decade ago. What do you think of that comment? I think he's actually, he's got a point. I mean, I think that uh, Vladimir Putin has forgotten recent Russian history, that when the Russians put boots on the ground in Afghanistan, the Saudis galvanized the jihadi movement that we are still feeling to this day. We're talking about al-Qaeda, the roots of al-Qaeda, the roots of the Taliban, and other very dangerous and bloody jihadi organizations motivated by the, an ideology uh, that continues to haunt us. And I think that the fact that the Russians now think that they can deploy out of Syria where, of course, the Saudis have assets and the Sunni jihadis are, are, are plentiful. It, it could be that, uh, that Putin has just opened up the door to a violent campaign against his army and his country, the likes of which we've not seen before. That's interesting. That's a perspective we haven't heard yet. And it was interesting to hear that comparison uh, Josh Ernest making to say that a political solution has to be paramount. You know, there's a big question about what a political solution will really look like in Syria if it can be achieved. So much more to talk about. Uh, Jonathan, great to have you in the program as always. Thank you. Pleasure.